Welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the Laplace transform of cosine of AT. Now recall our last example was uh, the Laplace transform of sine of AT. And so a smart way to do this would be to use the derivative formula for uh, Laplace transforms. And so, yeah, there is a, a formula, a derivative formula to be specific, that relates the Laplace transform of one function to the Laplace transform of the derivative of that function. So we can start with the transform of sine of AT and use that derivative formula to get to the transform of cosine of AT. But because I'm not going to show you that derivative formula for another few videos, uh, here we're stuck having to reinvent the wheel and to use a definition. But it's fine. Um, it's just that we're going to have to mimic the steps of the last example. And so I'm going to try to do this quicker. So using the definition, we know that L of cosine of AT um, which we can write is capital F of S uh, is the integral from um, zero to infinity of e to the negative st times cosine of at times dt, right? Okay, cool. Um, accidentally moved it a little. Okay, there we are. Uh, and now we're going to use correct grammar on this improper integral and write uh, limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from zero to b of e to the negative st times cosine of at times dt. And I'm going to call this here capital B. And instead, let's deal with capital A, which is just the integral of e to the negative st um, cosine at dt. Now, notice the only difference between capital B and capital A, only two differences, the limits of integration and the fact that I have limit as b goes to infinity here. Otherwise, they're the same, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And so uh, working out what a capital A will be will go a long way in helping us figure out uh, how to deal with b. And um, in each step, now I don't have to write limit as b goes to infinity and all that good stuff. I could just deal with um, capital A. And capital A is just an exercise on um, integration by parts, right? So let's start uh, with dv equaling cosine of at dt and then uh, v will have to equal sine of uh, at divided by a right and then um, u I'll say is e to the negative st I have no choice right uh, du will then have to be negative uh, negative s e to the negative st and then dt right okay cool 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 um, so then, by the integration by parts formula, capital A was going to have to equal uv, uh, so that's e to the negative st times sine of at divided by a uv, and then minus the integral of v du, right? Minus, now notice that du comes with a negative sign, v is positive, so minus v du is going to write plus, and then... Um, v has a constant in the denominator and then du has a constant in the numerator namely s so i can factor out s over a here and what i could write inside is uh, inside of the integral is e to the negative st and then sine of at dt right now unsurprisingly this integral here is going to require integration by parts and we're going to make the same pick of u and therefore we're going to have the same du as well but dv this time is going to have to equal um, sine of at dt. So then v this time will have to equal um, negative cosine of at divided by a, right? Okay, so that means that capital A, right, um, the integral we're after, is going to equal, and I'm going to put this in the denominator with a positive exponent. So I have sine of at divided by a times e to the st, got it, and then plus s over a, and then this integral here, using integration by parts, is going to be uv, so this times that, um, and so that's going to be negative um, e to the negative st uh, cosine of at divided by all divided by a, so that's uv, and then minus the integral of v du. v du. Notice that 
both V and DU uh, have a negative in front. And so when we multiply them, they're just going to turn into positive. So basically, I can ignore this negative and that negative. But I'll still have an S in the numerator and then an A in the denominator. So I can factor out an S over A. But otherwise, as I said, the negatives are gone. Um, and then I'll have uh, E to the negative ST um, and then times uh, cosine of AT and then DT. But wait. I'll close the bracket here. But wait, y'all, look at this here. This here is identical to that there. So this here is our integral capital A. How nice, because next we can write A is equal to sine of AT divided by A e to the ST, and then plus, we're gonna distribute this S divided by A both to this guy and to that guy, right? And so when we do in this part, we're going to get um, negative s cosine of at. So then I intend to put this guy in the denominator with a positive exponent with that constant a. But this constant a is also multiplied by that a. So I've got a squared and then e to the st, right? Cool. And then distributing this over here, I'm going to get minus s squared over a squared and then this is capital a right there right okay so capital a how nice okay uh now you should anticipate my next move which is i'm going to add this guy to both sides of this equation and when i do on the left side i can write uh, factoring out an a since i'm going to have a plus s s squared over little a squared times a i'm going to have that on the left side i can factor out the capital a and write one and then plus s squared over a squared, right, equals um, this, right? Because this is gone from the right side. This is gone from the right side. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. This is gone from the right side since I've added, added it to both sides of the last equation. So I'll just have this guy and this guy left. And um, that's plus minus, so I'll just write a minus. So I have sine of at divided by a times e to the st and then minus um, s over a squared and then it'll be um, cosine of at uh, divided by e to uh, the st, right? Okay, cool. Now I want to go from a uh, to capital A, that is, to capital B. Uh, look at what I'll have to do. Well, first, I've taken care of this integral here. Uh, the value of this integral here is this here, right? I just need to evaluate it at 0 and b. Um, so uh, what I need to do is uh, put 0 and b here, and of course also write limit as b goes to infinity, limit as b goes to infinity right in front of all of this, right? So taking the limit of all of this as b goes to infinity, and then I can go from a to capital A to capital B, right? You reckon? All right, all right, all right. So then, so then doing that and also taking care of common denominators here, I can write in my next step that I have capital B uh, and then little a squared plus s squared over uh, little a squared is equal to and um, limit <laughs> as b goes to infinity, right? I just didn't have space there, but you saw it. I should have anticipated that and made space, but it's okay, it's okay, we'll live. Um, all right. And then I evaluate a b, right? I evaluate this quantity of b, and then I evaluate it as 0 and take the difference before I uh, take the limit as b goes to infinity, right? So when I evaluate a b, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get um, sine of ab divided by a times e to the sb. And then um, I'll have minus s over a squared, and then cosine of ab divided by e to the sb, right? And then when I plug in 0, this guy is going to turn into 0 because I'm going to get sine of 0 in the numerator. And then here I'm going to get minus s over a squared and then times cosine of 0, which is 1, divided by e to the 0, which is 1. So I'm just going to get minus s over a squared when I plug in 0. But then remember, the evaluation theorem also comes with a minus sign. That is, once I plug in b, then I, I do 
uh, B plugged in minus zero plugged in. So I need that minus sign that I just spoke of. And then once we plug in zero, as I said, here I'm gonna get negative S over A squared. So this is really plus, and then it's S over A squared. Yeah, cool. All right, all right. Uh, now all I have left to do is send the limit as B goes to infinity. Uh, and here, uh, let's note that um, negative one is less or equal to sine of AB, uh, which is less or equal to in turn one. And then similarly, negative one is less or equal to cosine of AB, which in turn is less or equal to one, right? That's all to say that these guys here and here are finite and they're bounded. They're very finite in fact, right? They're less than one, they're bounded. So when B goes to infinity, um, this guy here, which is going to go towards infinity, and this guy here, which is going to go towards infinity, are going to dominate the numerators. So that's all to say that this is going to go to zero, and this is going to go to zero once we send b to infinity, right? And therefore, the only thing we'll have on the right-hand side uh, is s over little a squared, yeah? Okay, so then I'll have, I'll have, um, let me move this up a little bit and there should be enough room to finish. But what I'll have is b times um, little a squared plus um, s squared over little a squared is equal to, and then on the right side, as I said, the only survivor once we uh, said b to infinity is uh, s over little a squared, right? Okay, cool. So then it's pretty clear what I'm gonna do next. Uh, since all we're after is b, which is the Laplace transform of cosine of at, um, what I'm going to do is um, multiply both sides of this last equation by the multiplicative inverse of uh, this here. And that's just a fancy way of saying by the reciprocal of this, right? Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to multiply by a squared over um, a squared plus s squared on both sides of this last equation. Um, and then, and when I do, on the left side I have, boom, boom, and just the B, right? Uh, capital B, uh, to be specific. And on the right side, look at what I'll have on the right side. On the right side, I'll have, well, this, let me do it in black, this guy and this guy take care of each other. So I'll just have S divided by A squared plus S squared, which is the Laplace transform of cosine AT. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right, this is it. Uh, keep watching. Take care.